Hey everybody, welcome to Good Turn Daily. Um, today we're going to be doing a vase just made out of scrap. Uh, I know that everybody has a lot of scrap laying around their shop and I thought I'd uh, just kind of follow suit with everybody else and see what I could make. So I started chopping up some, some stuff. The two uh, boards in the middle are alder. Uh, that one I believe is cherry. That I believe is Purple Heart. And another piece of alder. Some oak. And then another piece of cherry. kind of had my in my mind to do a vase with this um, I know I did a, uh, a walnut vase last week but I think next week what I'll do is I'll uh, start cutting up some boards and and we'll do a, a larger dish with uh, some multiple pieces of wood So after I put this on, that top piece broke off. So as uh, my dad would say, adapt, improvise, overcome, and just eliminate it, which is fine. And for you Marines that were out there, you would probably identify the adapt, improvise, overcome. So all in all, this was a fun project. The only thing that is uh, was really hard on this one is uh, the alder was so dry. Um, and you can see that I don't have my face mask on, but I do have some eye protection. But I had to put on a mask because it was getting so dusty. And if you continue to watch, you'll see that my bench just gets covered with wood dust. Uh, I wish they were shavings, but uh, you know, hey, we take what we can get. So one of the problems on this is there was two knots in the alder. And so I put those in the middle and I thought, okay, well, when we make a vase, We'll, uh, we'll make it kind of an hourglass shape, so we'll, we'll eliminate those, uh, those knots. Uh, the only problem is, is I've never turned Purple Heart. That's actually in the middle, but uh, the Purple Heart is pretty hard. I, I was surprised. And so it, it kind of fought back with me. The alder just gave way, and then that Purple Heart kind of is on the oak side of things. And then on that bottom, that cherry, uh, that cherry just, um, I, I could turn that, it, it's a dream. Yep, still not deep enough to get rid of that knot. I really hate how my lathe moves. I'm gonna have to do the same thing that I did on, on the headstock. Uh, I just put those boards down and glued them to my bench, so I'm going to have to do that where the tailstock is as well. I think that's going to help a lot with the vibration, and um, I'm really sick of it moving. So, See how that thing likes to move on me?
problem is, is I can't put any bolts into the top part of the cabinet so yeah, I'll just have to have to figure out another thing to do that sandpaper that cherry just shines right up I, I start off with 500 grit and uh, sorry 220 grit and then 500 grit and then um, sometimes I'll go to a thousand thousand two hundred if I really want a, a real good shine on it see how, how dusty I'm getting and also how dusty it is on my bench. So the nice thing is is that oak that I put on there they're just real thin strips and I'm gonna have to do some more projects like that just to to give it that that oak ring came out really good the only problem is and you'll see this later but that oak uh, ended up chipping out and so that was gonna be kind of a problem because I, I wanted it thicker but uh, didn't turn out that way and I'll tell you those paddle bits um, they actually work really well. I, I'm surprised. I usually use the Forstner bit, but I didn't this time. I, I like them because they're longer, and the Forstner bits, unfortunately, they, they don't get very long. Or I haven't found a set yet that has a long shank to it, so... I really need to get a hollowing tool. One of these days when I get rich. I love that purple heart. It's so cool. See that chunk out of the oak? thing that I noticed about the alder is uh, you can smooth it out but it, it, you'll have some spots that has the end grain and it really makes it kind of tough to make everything really uh, nice and smooth uh, you'll see me a little bit later in the video that I come back and and hit a couple spots because there was just some little chunks that were taken out and um, little rough patches But here I am, like I said, I start out with the 220 grit sandpaper and move to a 500 grit. And then eventually I, I go to a thousand. I'll tell you, if you really want to make things shine, uh, do the work and do the sanding. Because once, you know, all of those pores are closed up and uh, you're adding your shellac or obi shine juice or wax or whatever it it definitely makes a difference so but it's just time and you know this is easy stuff anyway hmm <laughs> 
pardon me while I clean up some stuff. And here I come back and, and hit those spots. And I thought I'd do a couple burn lines in it. So here I'm using my own um, abrasive paste. It's just basically diatomaceous earth, some beeswax, and some oil. And it really does a good job in smoothing everything out. And Usually I use sanding sealer, but I actually did the, the sanding up to the 1000 grit. Uh, and this is just sh shellac that I put on. I finally found the trick to shellac, is you just put it on and then let it dry. You don't buff it or anything like that. And then I finish up with the feed and wax, or wax and feed, I can never remember what it's called. Just to give it a little bit more protection, but look at the chatoyants on there. It came out really nice. And I love the purple heart in the middle. That came out pretty. The only bad thing about the shellac is you may want to wear gloves. Uh, it, it made my hands just super sticky and even when I tried washing them off they still felt sticky for the rest of the night. So there it is folks. I uh, hope you like it. Uh, I think it came out nice. It'll make a good gift for somebody. Uh, who knows, you know, maybe it'll just be a pencil holder or whatever, but uh, thanks for joining me. I remember to do a good turn daily and love one another, okay guys? Take care of each other.